What's up everyone, Lion Roar here, and we have got to talk about this huge costume drop that Empires and Puzzles just gave us. Because not only can you summon the hero with a costume, but multiple costumes. And I'm really excited about how they look, so let's dive right in. But first, download Jumpstone Legends, a mobile RPG puzzle match game. Use the link in the description to start with free stuff, including a bonus hero. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the new costume Obacon. Uh, we're just going to cover the brand new costumes in this particular one, but as I said in the opener, there are multiple costumes that you can get with this. So if you haven't reviewed those other costumes previously, you can watch some of my other videos for information or just kind of scroll through them. But let's take a look at the brand new versions. So uh, we have an Obicon costume here that's a fighter class, and that's really, really good. I feel like that's the best class, or at least um, competing with one of the best classes there. And I'm only going to cover the costume bonus once because it's the same for all the heroes, but basically you get a boost to attack of 15%, defense of 15%, health of 20%, and mana, which is really important, of 15 five percent that makes these heroes a lot speedier so especially when we cover the slower ones they get a huge boost out of the costume bonus also remember if you level up both the regular side of the hero and the costume side it is going to get that bonus all right we've got 829 attack 793 defense and an astounding 1591 hp so if you want to boost obacon costumes defense quite a bit here uh you can make this a really tanky type of character and i think that works really well with a special vampiric cleave which is at fast speed mind you um and i have a feeling this has the potential to be a really powerful special that we're going to see all over battlefields coming soon. Deals 260% damage to the target and nearby enemies, and that's at fast speed. Remember, that's quite a bit of damage, but that's not even the best part of the special. Uh, the caster and nearby allies counterattack with 95% of the damage received for three turns. We've seen counterattack before. It's not uh, my favorite thing in the game, but when it's paired with a really good special, it can just be overwhelming, and I think it's paired with a really good bit of last text here. The caster and nearby allies regenerate a moderate amount of mana for each counterattack. The effect gets diminished for consecutive activations during the same turn. So when you put it all together at fast speed with the mana boost, Obacon is going to be dealing quite a bit of damage to enemies, counterattacking, and then causing himself and the nearby allies, which if you put them at tank are gonna be the flanks, to gain mana faster. This is a really important costume. I love this costume. I wish I had this costume. If I had this costume, I probably would very seriously consider putting this Obicon costume at my tank position because I think that's where he's gonna specialize and I think he's gonna be really, really good. So um, yeah, congratulations to any of you that get this Obicon costume. I would level it up right away. I would. You know, make sure to get the costume bonuses out of leveling it up and put all the emblems on it and, you know, um, limit break it and everything. I think this is a really great costume. So, of course, I'm going to give this version of the costume Obacon an A, which I'm not used to for Obacon. He hasn't been a strong hero in Empires and Puzzles lore and history, but I think this may push him over the top. Next up, let's look at the new costume Vivica, who is also of the fighter class. We've got a new yellow and purple fighter so far. Of course, getting the costume bonus with 800 attack, 807 defense, and 1630 HP. My gosh, they are just loading on the stats to these uh, new costumes here. Omni Mend is the special at slow speed, which I don't usually love. But again, with the costume bonus, speeding up the mana. Um... It makes it worth it, I think. She boosts the health of all allies by 670. Boosted health can exceed max HP. We we know that's a strong effect. Overhealing is like almost mandatory in this day and age in Empires and Puzzles. All enemies get negative 39% attack for four turns. Not usually the most useful type of text on a special, but with the boosted attack, that really helps to defend your entire team and make it hard to defeat, whether you're using Vivica on offense or defense. And then lastly, dispels buffs from all enemies. 
Uh, and of course, you know, um, as well as I do in this day and age, there's lots of really annoying buffs out there as well as status ailments. And they're pretty even as far as like annoyingness to get rid of. So having a costume Vivica like this, who's um, getting the mana boost, even though she's going off at uh, slow speed is going to be really important. So she's protecting your team really well by boosting health and by uh, giving the opponents negative attack and then also dispelling the buffs. Really, really important bit player. I think that um, she'll be a little bit of a toolbox healer, but it's going to be perfectly fine in pretty much any situation. But when she gets to dispel buffs, uh, that's going to make her huge. Plus, if you have the regular sides, I just think it's I think it's really powerful in Empires and Puzzles to have options. You know, choose to cleanse if you want to. Choose to get rid of buffs. Do defense down if you want to. And that's what makes these costumes uh, so, so powerful. And so for this costume, Vivica, I'm going to give her an A-. minus, Only because, um, and I would give her an A if she had a little bit better text where the enemies get negative 39% attack. But... Uh, there's more powerful things to be doing in the game. So I'm going to give her an A-, minus, which means you don't use her all the time, but you're going to use her a lot. <laughs> but what's great is you get to pick the side of the costume. Next up, we have the new costume Kagan, which, take a look at that art, man. <laughs> it's like from 101 Dalmatians or something. Um, so anyway, he's a druid class, um, which is okay. Uh, I like the minions that it creates if you're on a more defensive type of build, but otherwise... The class doesn't seem to affect too much. 829 attack, good to see on this. Um, because it is a slow speed damage dealer and, you know, you, you kind of need the attack to be up there. 767 defense, which is not all that strong in this day and age. And then 1658 HP, which is, again, very strong, uh, just like the last couple of heroes. Chieftain's Vengeance is slow speed and deals 285% damage to all enemies, uh, which is really nice. So if you can get that attack stat up a bit, it'll do even more damage. All allies receive a moderate amount of mana over five turns, and all allies get plus 40% defense for five turns. Now, I like this a lot better than the previous versions of Kagan. Um, I'm still going to have to be convinced that dealing the damage it does at slow speed is worth it, but if you can get the attack up, um, I think that... Uh, the weakness of Kagan has just been how minimal the damage has seemed for the amount of time it takes for the special to go off as far as mana goes. But this makes up for it because once Kagan goes off, then all allies receive a moderate amount of mana. So what that means is you're charging Kagan again faster, but also everybody else. And I think that actually takes Kagan from just being a sort of background thought in Empires and Puzzles, kind of brings him to the forefront a little more. If you're in an alliance that especially for wars is running red tanks and you get him, he might be an upgrade over a lot of the heroes out there that exist just because of that amount of damage, defense boost, and now mana gain for the whole team. It could be a really annoying type of tank to deal with. I don't think he's the best red tank out there, but I think he's actually pretty close to the top. I wouldn't put him in tier one, but maybe tier two pushing to tier one. So for that reason, I'm going to give Kagan costume a B plus because like I said, I think he, he can be good, but I just can't imagine using him anywhere else other than tank or in very fast wars and tournaments. Next up, we have Khalil costume, and this is an epic hero, but my gosh, the, <laughs> the epic heroes they make these days are like five-star legendary heroes like even stronger than them from like way back in the day so i'll tell you what like even getting an epic hero right now and leveling it up you're going to be able to compete with many many five stars i mean just looking at the stats here on this four-star khalil costume it looks better than a lot of my five-star heroes that i got back in the day and i have fully leveled up so Man, my gosh, the power creep is real. But she is sorcerer class. Um, not one of the best ones, but it's fine. Uh, 788 attack, 767 defense with 1136 HP. I think that's probably the only thing that's a little questionable about her is the HP is lower. But again, it's an epic hero. These stats on attack and defense are out of this world for an epic hero. Dance of the Flames is the special at fast speed, deals 220% damage to the target and nearby enemies for an epic hero who's starting at 788 attack. This is without the emblems and limit breaking. 
This is amazing. So that's a quite a bit of damage. If she had no other attacks on her, she'd still be pretty good. But she also says the target nearby enemies receive 198 burn damage over three turns. The caster absorbs 30% of dealt burn damage as health. This is like almost a better grave maker at epic at four star my gosh for those of you who just joined empires and puzzles in the last like three to six months you're like getting spoiled because this would have been an a legendary hero back in the day as an epic hero i'm totally giving her an a that's a lot of damage at fast speed and dealing the burn damage and on top of it, absorbing health. So she's going to be really hard to kill. So even though that HP makes her a little bit of a glass cannon at only 1136, she's going to be like gaining and regaining and regaining a lot of that HP back uh, just over time from burn damage. So when you go after Khalil, you have to kill her if, if she's on the opposing side, because otherwise she'll just stick around and stick around and keep burning you down. And just like Gravemaker back in the day, well, you know, you can burn down before you realize what's happening. So uh, especially in like for players who get her in, let's say, mid tier or lower tier, like you're a newer player, you're pushing into that second tier. Super powerful. Would level her up right away and stick her right in. And even for players who've been around for a while, like I would have no hesitation just leveling Khalil up absolutely using her in like epic tournaments and stuff like that but i think she can be used in a lot more than that so of course khalil gets an a next up we have elkanen costume which is paladin class and i think that's probably the most underrated class because it's very very good i think it's actually up there with fighter class and rogue class um, and that's just because whenever the defense uh, boost goes on. It's just so hard to kill a hero like Elkanen, especially when the defense is already at 871. So speaking of the stats, he's got 805 attack. Very good. 871 defense is out of this world and 15, 14 HP is very, very good as well. Lunar Spear is the special at fast speed. Deals 230% damage to all enemies. And that is a lot of damage when you consider that he's starting at 805 attack and you can increase that with talents um all enemies get 50 percent decrease for any healing received for three turns this effect can't be cleansed now do remember it's hitting all enemies at fast speed i'm not a huge fan of the second bit of text here it doesn't seem to do a whole lot but it can be really annoying uh for an opponent when this is closer to the front like maybe a flank here or even a tank in a lot of situations um, because it's just really hard to like fight through this and keep your team alive. Let like let's say Elkanen's going off. It's kind of sneaky to not be able to heal as much because before you know it, yeah, maybe Elkanen's gone off a couple times and your heroes are still alive. But if you're not able to heal up, any of those back heroes behind Elkanen, whenever they fire off, uh, it's gonna make it really hard to keep your team alive. So. Um, I think this is a cool costume. There's not a whole lot going on for it, though. So I'm going to give it a B plus because of that. Um, it's mainly just straight damage to everybody and then some sneaky, like not able to heal stuff. There's definitely way more powerful stuff going out there, going on out there. But Elkanen is a great costume. Um, I like it a lot. It's just not going to be one that you bar none take in every situation. And lastly, we have the Isarnia costume, who is of the cleric class with a disgusting 934 attack. What the heck? <laughs> and then there's a 733 defense. So you can see she's a little bit of a glass cannon. That's what I use to describe a hero that just comes out absolutely wrecking face, but can also die easily. Uh, that is her weakness. HP at 1432, which is the lowest of the ones that we've looked at today, other than the four-star hero, of course. Um, Glacial Vortex is the special. It is slow speed, but remember, it gets the costume mana bonus, so there is that to consider. It deals 270% damage to all enemies, which is big considering this 934 attack. But it is slow speed, so, you know, you got to balance it out. It's like... It's costume slow, so it's not slow slow, it's costume slow. Uh, all enemies get negative 34% attack for four turns against nature characters. This status effect becomes uncleansable and lasts two turns longer and deals extra damage against 
fire. So what's cool is she's she is protecting a little bit against nature uh, characters, and uh, she is also, of course, dealing the more damage against fire. So it's one of the rare heroes we've seen that is taking advantage of two the two types of colors that matter to this hero uh, as far as like whenever it's going up against a defense or vice versa if it's on defense going up against an offense. So it's got an answer for the nature heroes and uh, is more likely to kill the fire heroes. So that is something to consider with her. Um, she doesn't do the defense down like uh, the original... Um, Isarnia, which is, I think, a really great quality to have. So it's kind of disappointing to see that. I don't think negative 34% attack makes up for the defense down. Uh, so what you're mainly getting out of Isarnia, in my opinion, is just the gigantic amount of damage she's going to do when she goes off. So she better go off. I'm not, like, super thrilled about this costume. Um, I think, again, there's not a whole lot going on with it doesn't have the best text on the special, but it's not bad either. Like I would have no qualms about like leveling a Sarnia up and using her in certain situations. I just don't think you can use her in every situation. So you're mainly going to use her for the damage and then a little bit for the defensive style special to protect your team a little bit. There's way, way, way better blue heroes out there. They've just printed amazing blue heroes into oblivion at this point. There's so many good options out there. But if you're a newer player or a mid-tier player and you don't have a lot of those blue options, um, well, then Asarnia may be one that you can use for a while, at least until you get some better options. So, you know, for that reason, I'm going to give Asarnia a B because she's still good. I'm not saying Asarnia is bad at all. And sometimes when I give Bs, people are like, yo, why are you giving her such a terrible grade? It's not a bad grade. It's a good grade. It's fine. You're just not going to use her in every situation. The um, costume bonuses are what make me most excited and why I'm a little more favorable with my grades than you might expect to. Some people might say, Sarnia's trash, she gets enough. That's not true either. The costume bonus is amazing. It makes these heroes a lot better and you get the option of choosing who's going to be uh, better as far as the three types of the hero that exist. So I'm really excited about these costumes. Um, they're amazing. Uh, I am going to be summoning for them as far as like I, I saved up uh, free tokens. In fact, I already did them. You can see I have n none of the free tokens left um, and I only got rare heroes. Um, but uh, let me know in the comments what you get and what you're most excited for and what you think the grades are for these heroes. And if you've tested them out, I'm just curious to know. Uh, if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and hitting that bell notification so you know when I drop new videos or go live. And I will catch you in the next one.